G'day mate, I'm Brian Bayer and for this week's episode of Briac Wheel Tales of a Wandering Gringo, we're in Parque Seminario, or Seminary Park. And if you're wondering why I'm using this god-awful accent, it's because we're going to take a close-up look at one of the coolest critters on the equator, the iguanas. Now, <clears throat> I am going to stop using this accent because I feel like a bad mix of Steve Irwin with a cold and that little Cockney boy from Les Mis. So, <clears throat> Ah, much better. All right, when I got to Ecuador a little over two years ago, it seemed like the coolest thing to see these iguanas everywhere. But since I've been living here, I've realized that really, they're kind of just like green scaly squirrels. So let's take a closer look. Here in Ecuador, there are three main types of iguanas people see. In the coastal regions of the mainland, the green iguanas dominate the landscape. They can be seen just about anywhere basking in the sun or munching on a fallen mango. Typically, they're pretty skittish, and unless they want to become roadkill, they know they've got to move. But here in the downtown area, as you can see, they are much bolder and enjoy the protection of the small parks. In fact, there are so many iguanas here in Seminary Park that most people just call it Iguana Park. If you are lucky enough to visit the sacred Galapagos Islands, you'll see the other two types of iguanas that call Ecuador their home, the giant land iguana and the incredible marine iguana. The land iguanas range in color from bright yellows to browns and a few that are even a black and pink mix. These territorial reptiles can be up to 3 feet long and weigh up to 30 pounds. Their cousins, the marine iguanas, are even more fascinating. The Galapagos Islands are actually the only place in the world where these prehistoric creatures live, making them an endemic species. They serve as some of the best proof of adaptation and evolution on the planet. Over hundreds of thousands of years, they have evolved tails that help them paddle through the water and claws that help them grip the lava rock while they are grazing. As the only seagoing lizard in the world, they have also evolved a gland that essentially sneezes the salt out of their body after they have dived in a stomach that can digest seaweed. So, if these guys ever do evolve into something more like Godzilla, let's hope they remember who their friends are. Until next time, I'm Brian Bayer, and thanks for watching Briac Wheel, Tales of a Wandering Gringo.